So now that we know a little bit about arrays, let's create the Hall of Fame for a video game. So here's our problem statement. Most electronic games have a Hall of Fame that keeps track of the few players that have earned the highest scores. Let's implement a five-person Hall of Fame for the latest and greatest game, Zork, the Revenge of the Zerds. First, we need to think about what our test data is going to be. So player A might get 10 points, and B20, and C30, and D40, and E50, and F60, and G70. Then only person C through G should be in our table, and should be in the reverse order. Now we also could put the data in the opposite order. So maybe G70 is first, and F60 is second, and E50 is third, and so on. This will give us the same result, although the program will be doing different things. And we also might want to try some random order. So maybe D40 and then B20 and E50 and A10. Things like that. So that should be a good test of our program. The next thing we need to consider is a very important choice. Do we want to use an array or do we want to use an array list? Remember that arrays are generally more efficient than array lists because they have less overhead. So things like resizing, which the array list does behind the scenes outside of your control, can be very expensive. Also, methods have a certain amount of overhead. To call a method, there are usually five to ten assembly language instructions that get executed to set up the parameter passing and handle the return values. Those things do cost money, and so we don't want to do them needlessly. Basically, the limitation of arrays is that they have a fixed size. Now, in this case, a fixed size isn't a problem because we only want to have five people in our Hall of Fame. So basically, if you know what the size should be, an array is always the right choice. Sometimes an array will be a good choice in other circumstances, too. The next thing we need to do is consider the choices for our data. We have two things that are going to be stored. We have the name of the player, and we also have the high score. Now, later on, we're going to have a better structure for storing that. But for right now, really our only choice is something called a parallel array. That is, we need an array of names, and we need an array of scores. We also need to consider where these arrays should be allocated. Frankly, I'm going to allocate them in the main program because I think that's a good place for them. We also might want to think about whether we're going to store the scores in ascending order or descending order. Now, that's a decision that can be made either way. It doesn't really matter. But we have to make a choice. Ascending order is the typical order that we store arrays in. But in this case, it would be sort of strange to have the lowest score at position 0 and the highest at the end. So let's pick descending order. If our arrays were not initialized, we would have to keep track of the size. Because when the first player plays, there will only be one person in the Hall of Fame. This isn't something that's necessarily difficult, but it complicates the program unnecessarily. There is a better strategy that's available. We could initialize the points array with negative numbers and adjust the method that shows the Hall of Fame so that it doesn't display negative numbers. Notice that what we're doing is hiding some implementation details, so people who are using the class will never know our little secrets. That's how we are in computer science. Let's go and get the program set up. So we're going to create a project called Hall of Fame Zork. And then we'll create a class, which I'll call Hall of Fame. After browsing for the correct directory, we'll do our little fixes, same as always. And here will be our arrays. We'll have a string array for the winners' names. And we'll have an integer array for high scores. If we're going to put data in high scores, we might want to think about the order for initialization. So we're going to have int index is 0. Remember, arrays are 0 indexed while index is less than highscores.length. 
Now that value doesn't make sense yet because we haven't constructed the array, but we will in a minute. So we'll set high scores of index equal to negative index. So that means the first one will be zero, the second one will be negative one, the third one will be negative two. So we are creating this array in descending order. The only thing that's bad about this setup is that the index zero is gonna have a value of zero in it. That's probably not a very good idea. So let's fix that right now. So negative index minus one will mean the first index will be negative one and the second one negative two and so on. One more thing we want to think about, in addition to the fact that we haven't constructed our arrays, which we should do right now. Before we go and construct those arrays, let's think about the size a little bit. Right now we're thinking the size is five, but that's kind of a small Hall of Fame. Remember, people like to see their name in the Hall of Fame. And because when people like to see their name in things like that, they want to play the game more and that's good for the company, we certainly want to make that possible. So let's create a constant for the size. So when some marketing guy comes in in a couple of months and tells us they want 10 people in the Hall of Fame instead of five, our code will only need one line of code changed. This is another anti-bugging strategy. Final int size equals five. And now we can construct the arrays. So for our string, it will be new string of size. And for high scores, it will be new int of size. I'm still going to leave high scores.length in the while loop, even though I could put size there too, because that's a little bit more robust. That way, whatever length the array is, is the length that's going to be used. It will work correctly either way, though. So we now have our arrays initialized, or at least we have our high scores array initialized. Probably not a bad idea to initialize the winner's names too. So we'll do winner's names equals and then an empty string. This is kind of a clever trick and is also an anti-bugging strategy. If we left the null references in the winner's names array, we could trip on those and get null pointer exceptions later in our program. By putting an empty string in there, for one thing, they won't show on the screen if somebody does happen to display them. So that's kind of a neat trick. But also, we won't have any risk of getting null pointer exceptions because there is a string object there. So that's a good strategy. This time, let's write our user I.O. first. So that way, we can actually play with it as we're developing the program. One thing we might want to think about when we're looking at this code is that we actually have some things that could be put into a subroutine. That is, we could create a method for them. But there's a catch. If we try to put this code, where we're creating the winner's names array and the high scores array into a method, we actually can't do it because we would have to return two things from the method. So in this case, let's just leave it there. But let's put a comment on top of it to let people know what we're doing. So we'll say we're going to set up the arrays and initialize them with data. So that's a nice way of, of bringing all that section of code together. So here's the user interface. We're going to have to have the Zork game played and get a score. Now we don't actually have that code. This is actually pretty typical of what happens when you're developing in a big programming project. Somebody else somewhere in the company is working on the game and you don't really have access to it because they don't have their code finished. In fact, we have to do things in parallel like this, where one person is working on one part and another person is working on a different part. So what we're going to do is create a stub for playing Zork, and all it's going to do is generate random data. That should work. So we'll have public static int play Zork. Definitely want to make some comments here. Return a random number. Now what I'm going to do is create a random number called high score, 
which is going to equal, let's say, 10,000. It really doesn't matter what it equals. You certainly wouldn't want it to be only 10 because you want to get more different scores than that so we get a better test of our code. So what we're going to return is math.random, which remember returns a number between 0 and 1, times 10,000. So that will return a number between 0 and 9999. Got a couple of little typos that need to be fixed here. First off, that's an int. Also remember math.random returns a double, and so this is going to need to be cast to an int to return. Now the second set of parentheses that I'm putting around the math.random times 10,000, those are actually necessary. Because other than that, the cast would cling to math.random and would truncate it down to zero, and then you'll only get high scores of zero out. I also noticed that I did something silly here. I went and used the number even though I had a constant for it. That's a bad idea. Let's fix that. Notice Eclipse was giving me a clue about that too with the little yellow line telling me that I had declared a constant that I hadn't used. I see there's also an error up in the initialization code where I forgot to put an index on the string. So now we have Eclipse happy once again. So what we're going to do is create a loop. So let's say we play 100 games. Well now wait a minute, is 100 games a good number? We could play just five games, but five isn't a good number because then all of the scores in the games will end up in the table. What we want to do instead is play a bigger number, maybe 10 games. So that's a place to start. So while games less than 10, games equals games plus 1. Once again, putting the increment in the loop right at the start so we don't forget it. So what we're going to do is play Zork. So we'll have a score that comes back. And we're probably going to want to write out that score, mostly for testing purposes. Okay, now we can run our program at this point, and the advantage of running it is we can see if our play Zork method is working correctly. It's a good thing to know before we try to use it for testing. So here we run, and the game seems to be hanging. Basically we're in an infinite loop. Notice we've got a little red box here that tells us that our program is still running, and we never saw any output. So let's stop the program and see what could be wrong. Because we know this is an infinite loop, the two places we need to check are the two loops we've written so far. So our while games less than 10, that loop looks just fine. But take a look up on line 14 at what happened in that loop. We have index less than high scores dot length, but we never incremented index. So let's increment index. and run our program again and make sure everything's working. Well, we can see that our code's a little bit ugly because we missed a space. So we run again. And let's take a look. It does look like these are random numbers. It does look like they're in the correct range. So everything's going well there. So next we need to implement the add to Hall of Fame method. The add to Hall of Fame method is going to need four parameters. It'll need the current player's name and their score, and two arrays, one for the high scores and one for the players. Those arrays will be changed inside the method. The other thing it needs to do is to return a Boolean. Now the reason I'm returning a Boolean here is players want to know if they're going in the Hall of Fame or not. And so returning true will mean that they did go into the Hall of Fame and false will mean they didn't. As far as the algorithm goes, we need to figure out a good way to do this. If we start from the beginning of the array, as we do in many loops, we're going to have a little bit of problem. 
because let's say that a player's new score is bigger than the fifth player's score. So you would skip over the first four, but when you go to put it in the fifth position, you're going to overwrite the data that's already there. Well, the player that was in the fifth position needs to be moved to the sixth position. But if you go to overwrite that player, well, you've got the same problem again. And that's going to get very messy to deal with. There's a much nicer strategy if you start from the far end of the array and figure out if that data is better and then move it forward one position at a time. Because we write so many loops that start at the beginning of the array, it's hard to remember that starting at the end of the array is actually a reasonable choice. But always consider that a possibility if you're having some challenges writing code. So let's go and write the method. So we'll have public, static, boolean, add to hall of fame. We'll have the player's name. And we'll have the int for score. I'm going to move to another line because it's getting too long. So we'll have an integer array for the high scores and a string array for the players. Now as always, we're going to put in a return true that will keep Eclipse off our back for the time being. So we want to start at the far end of the array. So the index will equal high scores dot length minus one. Now this is an array, not an array list and not a string. So length is actually not a method in this case. It's a data element. So notice there are no parentheses after length. These are not big mistakes, but they are things that can eat up a bunch of your programming time. So we want to stop when we get to the beginning, where index is greater than or equal to zero. We definitely want to have equal to zero here for a couple of reasons. First off is there's the standard Java idiom that when you start at length minus one, you have to go back to zero. And so that's important. But also we want to make sure that each player has a chance to be in that coveted zero position, which is the highest score in the array. So now let's think about how we put data into the array. If high scores of index is smaller than the new score. That means that our new score is actually better than the one that's there already. If we find that high scores of index is in fact smaller than the current score, then score is going to go into high scores of index. But we need to remember to do one thing first, and that's move the high scores of index down a position in the array. This way, players only lose one position when somebody gets a higher score. There's also a special case we have to worry about where the last one could go off the end of the array. And so we'll need to test for that too. So if index is less than high scores dot length minus one, then what we want to do is to say high scores of index plus one equals high scores of index. In either case, high scores of index will then equal score. Now the order of these statements is extremely important. If you reverse them, you won't get the data in the right order. The other thing we might want to think about is we do have a parallel array structure here. So in addition to moving high scores around, we also have to be moving around the player names. So let's do that too. So players of index plus one equals players of index and players 
of index equals player name. So we're getting some pretty complicated nested logic here. Let's put in some comments to help people understand it. If we're not at the end of the array. And this will be checked to see if the current player belongs in the hall of fame. And this is getting too long, so I'll go to another line. So there we go. Now we still have to figure out this return type. So we have to decide when we should set a value to true. Well, if you think about it, you can always start assuming that the player isn't going to be in the Hall of Fame. So we set that to false. If we get down into this loop, where we actually see that the player is going to go into the Hall of Fame, then we can set Hall of Fame to true. And right down at the bottom of the code, then we return Hall of Fame. Now we haven't called this method yet, so we're not ready to run our program. So let's go up and call it. So here's where our game is being played. We've got a little challenge here because we haven't read in any player names yet. And we definitely need some player names. In fact, we haven't read in anything yet, so we're going to have to create a new scanner in order to be able to get some player names. Now we could generate them randomly too, but that gets a little bit more complicated. So let's not make things harder than they have to be. So we create our new scanner with system in. And of course, we'll have to import the scanner class just as we always do. You do a little bit of cleanup on the code so it stays looking pretty. Let's ask for the player's name before we tell them what they scored so they can't blame other players if they do a bad score. Besides, that's a convention in games that the player's name is asked for first. So we'll have a string name which will equal keyboard dot next line. And then instead of the player, we can say name scored that many points. If we run our program at this point, which I'm going to do in just a minute, we're not actually going to see whether the logic is working correctly because we haven't written any output yet. But we will see whether the program is crashing and stepping off the end of the array. That happens a lot when you're working with arrays. So it's an experiment that's worth running. This is a good sign that our program is not crashing. It doesn't mean it's working correctly, but at least we don't have a tough debugging problem to deal with. So now we need to write the code that prints out the Hall of Fame so we actually can check and see if our program is working correctly. Let's put it right after the main program. So we'll need our string array with players, and we'll need our integer array with high scores. So we'll have an int called index, and it will start at zero, because that's where we put the high score, while index is less than high scores.length. But we've got another condition here. Remember that we used a negative value to indicate that there wasn't a high score. We don't want to display data when there isn't a high score in it. 
So we need to check for that case right now. This is also something we definitely want to document in our program because these kind of subtle things are very hard to find if somebody has to maintain it later. So and high scores of index is greater than zero. It's very important that these test conditions are put in in that particular order. You have to check and make sure you're not off the end of the array first, and then if you're not off the end of the array, see if you have a negative value. If you put it in the opposite order, the program will break. You could grab the code and try that if you want to see what would happen. So we will do system out print line, and we'll say players of index, so that's the name of the player with the high score. Scored, probably not a capital S, and we certainly want a space there. High scores of index. Now this line is getting long, so I'm going to break it into two lines. And Eclipse is being very stubborn about this for a minute, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the line and then see if it will cooperate a little bit more. The thing that's missing from this is the actual rank of the player. People who play games are very competitive. They want to see that number one rank, so don't forget to put that out. Now we have to be a little bit careful here. First we're going to need a legend on the table. So we'll do system out print line, hall of fame, and then we'll put in the player's numbers. Now, there are lots of mistakes we can make here with this. Here is the first mistake. <laughs> now, if we leave it this way and don't run it, what you'll see is that index will get added to player's index. Because that plus sign is sitting between two integers, that means they're added as integers, not as strings. That is not what we want. There are several different ways that we can fix this. One way is very simple. And that's to do an empty string plus. This plus sign right here will change index into a string and concatenate it. And then this plus sign here will concatenate that string with that number. So this will actually work correctly. But it is pretty subtle code. We also have another little problem, and that's that if we think about it, index is starting at zero. Players may not be very happy hearing they're in position zero when they're at the top of the game. We want them to start in position one. So let's change to index plus one. That one I did have to put in parentheses because this is arithmetic addition. We're adding two integers together. We don't want it to get involved with the strings. So this plus sign here, that plus sign is integer addition. This plus sign is string concatenation, which makes this plus sign string concatenation, which makes this plus sign string concatenation. It's all rather painful. But that is the way it has to be done. Let me continue beautifying our code a little bit. Oh, I see that I also made a mistake in the while statement. Eclipse is pointing it out to me. Remember, high scores is an array, not a string, and so length doesn't have parentheses after it. If you're wondering about what happens when you make mistakes like that on a test, I don't even take off points for it because it's so unimportant. As long as you have an ID, you can find those errors very easily. We now think we have this printing out correctly. So let's call Show Hall of Fame. We could do it after this loop is finished, but frankly, I want to see the progress in the Hall of Fame as it moves along. So let's actually put it in here. We're going to want to know what the score is first, and then we'll have Show Hall of Fame from players, and scores. Whoops, looks like I forgot the name of my arrays in this main program. 
So our high scores and winner names. So let's fix those. Mm, Eclipse is still griping. Wonder what I forgot. Ah, winners' names. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. So this will show it every single time we go through. Now we're going to see quite a bit of output coming out of this program and we're going to have to go back and analyze it pretty carefully. So what I'm going to do is put in another blank line, which remember we just do a system out print line, because that way it'll give us some breaks when we're actually going back and looking at the data. I'm now going to give us lots of space and here we go. Okay, so it looks like A did not get very well into the Hall of Fame. Let's keep going and seeing if anybody got into the Hall of Fame. Okay, so nobody got into the Hall of Fame. Notice that even though we thought our program was working correctly, it isn't. So let's just stop it right here and go back and debug. The first thing I want to check is that we called our method that put data into the Hall of Fame. It turns out that's actually the problem here. So let's go and take a look at that method signature again, add to Hall of Fame, and make sure that we call it. So the parameters were the player name, the score, high scores, and the players. So we want to call that before we call Show Hall of Fame. So the player's name, which was name, and their score, which is score, and then the winner's names with that S on it that we forgot last time, and high scores. Now in a way this is, okay, so let's take a look at what Eclipse is telling us. So the order of parameters should have been string, int, int array, string array. Let's take a look at what I did. I did string, int, string array, int array. If you really think about it, that order makes more sense because the string is coming before the int both times. Since this is the only place we've called this method, let's actually fix the method signature instead of fixing the arguments because really the method signature is what's wrong here. So, this parameter should come after that one. This is also part of having your code be easy for other people to use. This is a more logical ordering of the parameters. The bad news here is this means that when we thought we were testing our program before, we actually weren't testing at all because we didn't call the method. So we definitely want to run it again and see how things are working. So here's person A. Uh-oh, we know what that means, that's an infinite loop. And now we really have a good idea at where that infinite loop has to be. It has to be in the method that we called. Well, here's one of the methods we called. And when you look at the method, what you see is we forgot once again to increment index. This is a real headache with while loops. We're going to see a different kind of loop where you don't forget this this often. It's called a for loop. It's one of my favorites. So let's see if that works better now. Uh-oh. Still have an infinite loop. It's very likely we made that mistake someplace else. So let's look at Add to Hall of Fame. Did index ever get incremented in that method? Well, and do we want to increment index in that method? Notice in this method we're starting index at the end and going back towards zero. So index should actually be decremented. 
Because we have some nested logic here, we want to do this pretty carefully. We don't want to just slap it in. We do not want to put the increment in the if statement because the if statement sometimes gets done and other times doesn't get done. So it needs to be after the if statement, but inside the while loop. One of the reasons that I don't usually use while loops in programs is that I do tend to forget incrementing the index. It's actually kind of a serious mistake. So those other loops that we're going to do, those are going to be really fun. OK, running the program again. OK, so we see one thing that's not so pretty. 1 and A got smashed together. But on the other hand, our Hall of Fame is looking good. So we know we're going to need to fix that. Oh, things are looking so good now. Notice all the scores are in order. So I'm actually not going to go any further. I'm going to go back and fix the output in the main program. Well, that output was done in the Show Hall of Fame method. So we'll go down to the Show Hall of Fame method. And what we see is we actually want a space between this index plus one and the player's name. So let's add that in. Before we dash to run this code too quickly, remember we had a complicated precedence problem here between the integers and the strings. So let's think it through first rather than just haphazardly running the code. This plus is an integer plus. That's exactly what we want. This one is string concatenation because the left-hand argument is a string. This is string concatenation because it will be between two strings. And this will be string concatenation because it's between a string and an integer. And so that's looking good. So now let's run again. There's our Hall of Fame. That's looking good. Enter the name B. That's looking good. We want to keep running this for a little while. Don't just stop so quickly. Because up to this point, we've just been filling in the array. We really don't know if our code at the tail end of the array is working yet, because we've only run it five times and there were five elements in the array. So the code could very well break on this next iteration. Now, we haven't encountered anything that gets added in. I guess we need a little more counsel to see what these values are. So g got put in the array. Let's keep going for a little while and make sure that things work. Notice H went up to the second position, and I'm pretty well convinced now that our program works just fine. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is we actually do have an infinite loop here because we're continuing to add things into the array. That's fine since our main program was just a testing program, and this is going to be used in other code.